And it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at how to repair or replace a broken USB 3.0 port on your motherboard. Keep watching to find out how. Now possibly you've been building your PC and whilst doing it you've plugged in your 30 pin connector into the USB 3.0 port on your motherboard and you've possibly bent the pins. Now there's various ways you can go about actually replacing or repairing that, some of those involving soldering on a new socket etc, but if you're potentially someone like me who isn't particularly proficient with soldering and you want a much easier and potentially cheaper way of doing it, then one of these little PCI Express cards can be the answer to your problems. Now this one has actually been sent in to us by Ugly Bob, so thank you very much Ugly Bob. There are various versions of this available, so if you are looking at a system which maybe is slightly older and you don't have a USB 3.0 port, or maybe a USB type C, you can get these little cards with combinations of various ports. And if you need more ports on the back as well, then you can certainly get those as well. I'll leave some links in the video description so you can check out the ones which are available and see which is best for you. In this particular instance, with our motherboard, we plugged in the header and I've actually bent the pins. I've tried to replace it by using soldering and unfortunately it hasn't worked and actually it made the port worse. So I am having to actually replace the port. So by getting this PCI Express adapter, this fits into a PCIe times one slot, which pretty much most motherboards built in the last 10 to 15 years should have, and you should have a spare one available. Do check your motherboard. Some are actually gonna be in a position where they potentially could block your graphics card. So do be mindful of that in case it blocks the airflow. Although most PCI Express times one slots are gonna to be towards the bottom of the motherboard. So it should be absolutely fine. This particular version actually has two USB 3.0 ports at the back there so if you do have one of the new modern cases where you've got actually four ports that you want to connect up you certainly can do obviously you don't have to populate both of them you can just plug in one should you want to and then you've still got a spare one available at a later date and also like i said there is versions which come with usb type c so perhaps you've bought maybe something like the corsair 4000d which has a usb type c port but you don't have a physical port on your motherboard that is also a very good option we've done a video on that which i'll leave in the video description also also, for some people, you may find that you've got this in a smaller PC, a smaller form factor. Don't worry, they've got you covered. There is actually a small bracket as well. So all you need to do is to undo the two screws and replace the standard width PCI Express backplate with the mini SFX one. So that's enough of an intro. Let's see how easy this is to actually install. So let's start off here with our PC, which we're actually gonna be using. So I'm gonna point out the PCIe slot. So we've got one at the bottom here. So this is a times one slot. You may find you've got a larger one, such as a times 16 size slot, which potentially might be wired for 16, eight, four, or just one. So either of these are actually compatible. You can use it in either, but ideally if you want, use the PCI Express times one slot at the bottom, just to give yourself a little bit more space above for your graphics card intake fans. Something else to consider as well is your actual motherboard header or your case header. Just make sure you've got access to that and can plug it in. I've actually routed this through. Normally it plugs into here. Um, you'll probably see some B-roll of that a little bit closer up so you can see the bent pins on the end, which uh, we've tried to repair, but unfortunately that is the port which is now basically non-functional. So once you've decided actually where you're going to install it, we're gonna to want to remove one of these PCI Express back plates or blanking plates and make sure it's level with the actual slot that you're using. In this instance, it's the very bottom one. So we're gonna get a regular cross-headed screwdriver, or you can use thumb screws if your case has thumb screws, and just remove the screw, and also the blanking plate, and put that to one side. So now with our blanking plate moved out of the way, we can get our PCI Express card. Now with this, the choice is up to you. You can either plug in your connector first of all, or you can do it after, whichever works for you. Just do take a little bit of care and attention, and see where the actual lug is. So this is the kind of separator, so you know which way round the actual connector goes. But having said that, let's put this card in. So what we want to do is to line it up with your PCI Express port, and then gently slide it in. And until it kind of clicks into place. Then you can get your screw, put your screw back in to attach the card into place and to make sure it doesn't wiggle. Make sure that's firm and that is fully seated. Good stuff. So now we can physically connect our USB 3.0 port 
which goes from the top of the case into the card itself. Now I'm gonna use the inner side one just to make things a little bit easier so I don't have to stretch this cable too far. Obviously when installing the cable, be a little bit careful. You don't wanna bend the pins on this one as well. So just line up one side and gently wiggle it into place until it clicks in. And there we go. There's our new PCI Express card and our cables connected and now we'll have fully working USB 3.0 ports. So there we go. We've now got our USB 3.0 card installed and connected up. And actually I've taken a Sharpie to the side of the PCB just to uh, hide some of that PCB, which was shining a little bit brightly because it was very white. So yeah, that looks very stealthy and basically you'd hardly know it was there. Now the PC has fully working USB 3.0 ports on the top there for the IO. So we're all good to go. Something that should be mentioned as well is the fact that this potentially is a extremely good value way of doing it. If you're gonna take your motherboard out and take it to a shop, etc., potentially you've got incurred costs and also that waiting time. And potentially a lot of shops these days just won't touch soldering motherboards because it's just not cost effective for them. And potentially it's gonna be very expensive to do. Whereas this, this particular version, looking around about 17 pounds at the moment on amazon.co.uk. If you go for the one with the USB 3.0 and Type-C, you're looking somewhere around about £20 mark. Again, I'll leave links for those in the video description should you want to pick one up. But overall, I think this is a, a very cost-effective way of doing it, especially if you don't have the necessary skills or tools to solder a new port in yourself. Anyway, hopefully this video has been useful. If it has, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, hit the subscribe button and the chime notification, and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.